This is Ann Larkham. And I will be interviewing Judge Luther Alverson for the government documenta Georgia Government Documentation Project. This is Thursday, October the 11th, 1990. Yes, that's work. Yes, it's already been, so we'll just go ahead and, and get right. um, we'll just go ahead and get started. But I okay. do need to get it close to you because it's not a, a really powerful All right. mic. Now we want to Where's the mic here? It's That's it that right there. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk first a little bit about your uh, background and your upbringing. And All right. you were born. Were you born in East? I Florida? was born on Washington. Avenue or Street, which is it? I've Avenue. <laughs> street, it, it, Washington it, Street. It has been street. known as both, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was born on Washington Street on August, uh, on August the 13th, 1907, on Washington Street. And um, my mother died, I imagine, while we were living there. Mm -hmm. uh, because she died when I was about seven months old, seven, eight months old. Mm -hmm. and Which then side of the father, railroad track? Was that East Washington? I don't remember. No, okay. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, uh, my father was in ministerial school at the time mm -hmm. at uh, Locust Grove. And uh, Therefore, he didn't have anyone to look after the children, and he was in ministerial school, and I spent the first five years of my life in the Georgia Baptist Orphan's home. In Hapeville. In Hapeville. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we moved to, uh, I think it's Woodward Avenue Baptist Church. On Woodward Avenue in Atlanta. Oh, okay. In Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to school, primary school, at the Grant Street, Grant Street School. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Went to Grant Street School. And we lived there for a good while, and my father took a church out to close to Hapeville. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Did your father remarry? Not, he remarried after we left the orphan's home. Mm -hmm. In other words, he, after he remarried, then he came and picked us up, and we went home and mm -hmm. lived out uh, in Hapel at that time. And then, uh, after that, uh, of course, I was going, uh, I went to grammar school at the uh, grammar school in Hapel. Jerry Wells, who has a son now by the name of Dr. Robert Wells, was the principal of the Hateful mm -hmm. School. Mm -hmm. And I graduated from the Hateful School. Later became county school superintendent. Yes, later became county school, for su school superintendent. And then, after graduating from there, I came to Fulton High School, which was the only school in the county high school, on the corner of Trinity and Whitehall. That building, I think, is still standing. I think it is. Mm -hmm. It's the southwest side of Trinity and Whitehall. Mm -hmm. That was before the Fulton High School was built over there. It was before it was built in East Point. Russell. Mm -hmm. Russell High, mm -hmm. before then. Mm -hmm. I was a graduate in 25. Then I went to Emory. And after my undergraduate work at Emory, then, well, before then, if you just want me to give you a, a history, yeah, all right. My father told me when, before I went to high school, he said, son, the, everybody needs a good education. And, uh, I can't afford to give you one, but you're going to have to make it yourself. And he handed me a, a, a pair of hand clippers, and I started clipping the hair of all the kids in the neighborhood 
and gave me some scissors. Then I went to, when I came to Fulton High School uh, at 13 years of age, I went to the Barber College on Mitchell Street in the afternoon when I was my first year in high school. And I wore a uniform while I was in high school because they had military training. Mm -hmm. We had military training at Fulton High, I wore a uniform. Mm -hmm. And I finished my first year and I went and graduated from the uh, barber school on Mitchell Street. And after that... Were you their youngest graduate of the barber school? <laughs> well, um, um, yeah, no doubt about that. And when I finished my first year, I got a job on Broad Street, where a couple of doors down from where Cotton Gym mm -hmm. feed store was up there until several years, mm -hmm. until a couple of years ago, really, mm -hmm. just down the street, where we knew the Cotton Gym. Mm -hmm. I got the job in my uniform and had to buy a pair of long pants to go to work. And I made eleven fifty, eleven dollars and fifty cents the first day I worked. Wow. <laughs> I did. And I worked my way uh, through high school and my own expenses and everything, working in the afternoon. I'm gonna tell you a story about it. Willie Franklin Dykes, who used to be principal of a boys high, was principal of a high school, Fulton High, when I went there. One of the professors down there told me years ago, I didn't know this happened when I was there, but he had one of, one of the teachers, he had one of the teachers to follow me one day. He noticed, he's looking out the window, he'd see me leave when I was supposed to be in study hall or something. So he had one of the teachers to follow me. And he followed me up to the shop where I was working on Broad Street, and I'd go up there and work for an hour or two, and then come back to meet my class. And he he said, don't you ever bother that fellow again. Let him go where he wants to, anytime he wants to go, leave him alone. Well, that was that, that's what Boyd, I can't think of Boyd's last name, Boyd uh, Taylor, Boyd Taylor. Mm -hmm. used to be one of the uh, writers for the Atlanta Constitution. But he's one who told me about it. I didn't know it until later. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, I finished that and went to Emory. Excuse and I me, didn't. were you the youngest child? You had older... Oh, friends? I was the baby. You See, the baby. I was just seven months old. Uh -huh. so I was uh -huh. the youngest in the family of four. Four children. One brother, two sisters. Mm -hmm. And when I left, I went to Emory. And rented some space right at the edge of the campus, right there by the railroad, where the president's home is now, but it's right on Clifton Road and uh, rented some space there in a laundry concession and put a barber chair in it and cut hair when I was there in the afternoon after school, paying my expenses. And then uh, later on, uh, I did my pre-law work there. You had to have 20 majors where you could get in law school, but then I went to the Atlanta Law School and uh, graduated there. And, uh, in the meantime, uh, when I first got out of school, I, I, I was away for a little while in between, and I had eight shops, beauty and barber shops, in downtown Atlanta, built to that. And uh, as a young man, I was elected uh, president of the uh, bar, so the barber associations and so forth. Uh, in, it, uh, in Atlanta. When you want me to stop, huh? Well, uh, no, just go ahead. That That's fine. Now, when did you go to law school? I graduated in 1940 and was admitted to the bar. I finished uh, in the middle of my second year in law school. I passed the bar mm -hmm. and started practicing law mm -hmm. in the middle of my law school. Mm -hmm. And I was in the beginning, when I first started practicing, I was being supported by these shops. But what happened when Social Security came in? I had eight shops, and I was working on a profit of not more than, mind about three or four percent mm -hmm. of gross sales would be mine. Uh, 
And after Social Security was passed, then I had to pay 3% Social Security. And it took all my profit, so I sold them. Yeah, well. Got rid of them. That was probably a good time. Yeah, I got rid of them. Time to get out. And then uh, when I finished law, then that supported me in the beginning of my law education. Mm -hmm. And then I went into the Army, the United States Army, in uh, May of 42. May of 42. Mm -hmm. Let's back up just a minute. What was the law firm that you had gone with? Hooper, today? Hooper, and Miller. Mm -hmm. Judge Frank Hooper, we were six old, uh, on the sixth floor of the CNS Bank building. Hooper, Hooper, and Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, judge Frank Hooper, he used to be chief judge of the federal court. Mm -hmm. And Sam Miller, who is with a firm here now, Sam Miller of. Uh, Let's see what is Sam's firm now. But anyhow, mm -hmm. uh, Judge Hooper came on this court on Monday, and I went in the Army on Friday. And uh, when I came back, of course, in the meantime, I'd married and had two children. And uh, then I went in the Army. I had to go as buck private and rear rank because they stopped having military training. And uh, at Emory, they stopped having it. Don't have it now. But if I'd gotten into advance, I could have gone straight to OCS. But I didn't. I didn't get into advance. To, you know, for the second second year, they didn't have it, so I didn't get into advance. So I had to go in as by private real rank for a while too. Drafted. Had a wife and two children. Where? Uh, all right. Where? How long were you in the military? And where was, where About were two you and then? a half years. Mm -hmm. Two and a half years. See, because now what I did in the beginning, I was sent to the infantry. And then after I completed my basic training, they kept me as what they call ECS. They put me as ECS, which so enlisted man's, uh, to become a, a non commissioned officer. You had to give you a graduate of this school, which I went to sent me there. My age, you see, I was 35 years old when I went in the Army. Yeah. Yeah. But they were, they were drafting. Yeah, they, they were, were drafting. drafting. And so I went in the Army. And then after that, uh, I later went to OCS and was commissioned in ordnance. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I was commissioned in ordnance, I went to the um, legal department of Chicago ordnance. And was, we were there for one year, and I took my family with me there. And I was paying the same thing in for rent out of, of an apartment in Chicago that the government was paying me as an officer. <laughs> so it didn't I leave mean, much. that was tough. So, yeah. but I had I had some reserve, and it took a lot of it, of course, to keep my family and everything going because I was had I made only fifty dollars a month, mm -hmm. and uh, I got twelve dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Uh, myself and the rest went to my family, mm -hmm. and of that, I'd send them seven, eight dollars a month. I wouldn't. I had. I was on a budget of three dollars a month. That's incredible. <laughs> so times well, are tough. Yeah. The now, war. Where do you want me to go from the war when ended, I came back? The war ended, and you came back. And I came back here and I walked the streets of Atlanta for two months, and didn't, couldn't even rent desk space. Not a vacant office in Atlanta, Georgia. And after walking the streets for two months, I ran into Howard Candler, who was in me when I was there. And I said, Howard, I've been out two months trying to find office space. Can you by chance find anything for me? He said, I've got some in the Walton building, and you can have it Monday morning. So I rented a suite in the Walton building, got some other uh, lawyers in with me, because they were dying, you know, the lawyers couldn't find space, but I had it, so uh, oh, I got started. And then after that, the way I got into politics, I was, um, in fact, I've been in second Punch Man Baptist Church for years. And in fact, my wife and I courted there, and we were married 48, been married 48 years. And the court is there. And we were well acquainted in the Buckhead area, of course. And they asked me to head up the campaign to uh, 
uh, fight to the annexation of Buckhead, which I did. And my, at the time, my program was to, we would become a part of Atlanta if they reformed the government. But they don't, and I came and ran for the legislature after winning that uh, campaign. In other words, uh, Bill Horsley, all of them were trying to get this done, and I defeated him, all of them. In fact, I headed up. Oh, so you were instrumental in that loss then, the first referendum. Yes, the first referendum was <laughs> you lost. You fought that. And I fought it on the grounds we, we want a total consolidation of Atlanta and Fulton County governments. Mm -hmm. And we want that, and we're willing to be a part of Atlanta if you'll do this. That was my campaign. Mm -hmm. And Eric Millican and a fellow by the name of uh, Roy LaCroix, former mayor, he was running for the Senate. I was running for the House, and a fellow by the name of Jess Watson was running for uh, as the other member of the House, and Moses Smith was the only one from the city of Atlanta that was elected. We won all the, all the races, defeated Everett Millican and all the people that had been in. Now, who is, who is we? <clears throat> Roy LaCroix. I headed it up. Mm -hmm. okay. I was running. And the mayor, every time we get on a platform, he'd fight me and I'd fight him, see. And, uh, but anyhow, Roy LaCroix, Jess Watson, and um, who else I just said a minute ago? Oh. Well, well <laughs> I'll get back to it. But anyhow, three okay. out of four we were elected. Mm -hmm. Most of us only one was not elected. Mm -hmm. well, it was elected. They called it the Four Horsemen. That's what I was going to say. I had read in one of the uh, accounts horsemen. that you That's were right. in. Yeah. yeah, Four Horsemen. I headed up Four Horsemen. Mm -hmm. And we, de we defeated that. And after I was elected, I, uh, I went to Cincinnati, Ohio, and, and uh, my own expense paid for the, uh, the Dr. and Mrs. Reed, who, Thomas Reed, who were the experts in the city government, mm -hmm. from outstanding experts. Mm -hmm. And I paid them and went up there on my own expense and paid them a fee to help me work out the best program of total consolidation. Now, was that had anything to do with the Mr. Reed that had been here in nineteen in the late nineteen yes. thirties yes. in, in the Reed Report? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it did. And uh, and the first day that I went in the Georgia legislature, first day I went in the Georgia legislature. I introduced a constitutional amendment to totally consolidate the Atlanta and Fulton County government. And also a bill to create a local government commission in order to implement that plan. And these are Here's the constitutional you... amendment. Here's the constitutional amendment. I was the only author to them. Here's the resolution. See whose name was first? Right here. Well, uh, that's Luther Alverson. Oh, okay. Hold for Luther Alverson. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but anyhow, and uh, Bill Hartsfield and the city administration fought it tooth and nail. All they wanted was annexation. But I held their feet to the fire, and we, the plan of improvement was a compromise in this legislation. Well, how, how had you got to feel so strongly? How, how did you get to feel strongly about the Total consolidation? That, yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt strongly because I felt it would be the best thing for Atlanta, and it's just too bad they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. All the way at the time. Mm -hmm. Because, and in fact, there was one provision in the bill that would kept, would have, even in the plan of improvement, 
But the difficulty about it, Hartsfield didn't test it early. Er, Ivan Allen, when he came in as mayor, he tested it, and it could have been found by a Supreme Court as constitutional, as just like that. There was just as much authority for it as was against it. But Chief Justice Doug, Duckworth, he dominated the Supreme Court, and every bill that we had introduced was held to be constitutional. This was the only one that wasn't passed on at the time. If it had been part of it at the time, the public feeling was for it. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think it would have been, uh, and under that, if a, if a land lot reached a certain number of people yeah. and needed city services, mm -hmm. then they could petition, the city could petition the Superior Court, the Superior Court would uh, could take it in to make it a part of the city without it going back to the legislature. Mm -hmm. But Duckworth killed it. The, it was it, close, four to three. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, that's. but at that time, you wouldn't have had all these other problems that you'd had. You would have had total college consolidation, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have had all the difficulties that you've had during the last few years. But this grew basically out of your community involvement then. Yes, it grew because mm -hmm. I was in the Civitan Club in Buckhead, and I was interested in and government because of being a lawyer and understanding it. And uh, not only that, but I said in the campaign, if you'll do this, we'll become a part of you. I held their feet to the fire. They tried their best to kill the plan of improvement. Mm -hmm. Finally, I crammed it down their throats. Mm -hmm. And we consolidated how close we came to having one government. Here's how close we came. We consolidated every governmental agency under either the county or the city except schools, airports, and public works. Everything else. Consolidated the police department. We had one police department countywide. We had one fire department countywide. Prior to the passage of the bill, you had to go to City Hall every year and file a tax return. Uh, and, and you had to come over here and file for the county. We consolidated that. We consolidated the boards, the zoning boards, all these other boards, everything else, on either the county of the city, so you didn't have to go to both of them. I mean, we did, did a lot of it. It's a history of real... Uh, we got... Come, I'll show you. Well, well now, see. when you introduced this legislation on the first day of the session mm -hmm. for total consolidation, then what, what happened after that? All right, I'll tell you exactly what happened. They had a bill before the committee governmental committee in the House and uh, a public hearing on it. Mm Hartsfield -hmm. and Muggsy, Muggsy did everything he could to, to, to kill it. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would not have been successful if it hadn't been for Albert Tuttle and Dick Rich. Now, Muggsy was part of the full delegation. Yes. All of you. They he were had a right to veto anything. See. In other words, I, when I was in the legislature, we just had three in the House and one in the Senate. They got 28 now. Yeah. I never worked as hard in my life. You know what I was paid for four year, four and a half years in General Assembly? I was paid $10 a, a day for a maximum of 70 days or $700 for two years. That's, and I worked from early in the morning to 11 and 12 at night. Mm -hmm. And I was in practice by myself at that time. Mm -hmm. It was after the war, see. And I was in practice by myself, so I sacrificed for practice and everything else to do it. But anyhow, I just, if I get, if I, if I go after something, you better look out because I'm going to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, they fought it vigorously. Mm -hmm. And Elbert Tuttle was ch uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce at the time. Dick Rich was a wonderful citizen, Richard Rich. You've heard of him, I know. <laughs> well, Dick, they they just made Hartsfield come around. When the plan first came out, I went over to Hartsfield, asked me if I'd come by. He'd like to talk to me about it. And he said, this is the damnedest thing I've ever seen in all my life. They think I'm going to give this new health building to the county. See, the county had the health facility, so they get that. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, he fought it vigorously. All he wanted was it. 
probably won't work to extend the set of limits. And, uh, but anyhow, uh, after, after it was passed, well, maybe, am I going too far? No. Mm -hmm. All right. After it was passed, so I came on the bench. I made it around for the criminal court of Fulton County, down at the end of the hall and the other end of the hall. Well, and I guess we should talk time. about the referendum uh, of its passage, yeah, you know, it how passed, it actually it got. Absolutely. Well, uh, well, they, like, the, the cab delegation they opposed it too. We had, we had to make, give them a majority of the members uh, of the commission, and we had Dr. Allen Albert, who was a professor in sociology at Emory, to chair the committee, mm -hmm. and we hired Joe Harmon, who's still living, Joe Harmon, and Hamilton, Loki? not Hamilton Loki, mm -hmm. no. Oh, he's an outstanding expert. He, he really did it for Joe. He and Joe, Joe, he was working for Joe at the time. I just can't think Well, of uh, who was the DeKalb delegation? DeKalb delegation, Pierre Howard, young Pierre Howard's father was there. The editor of the De DeKalb County era, I just can't think of his name. I could pull it out of the book here. Um, but I just can't think of his name. Tooley Hubert, who was uh, in the legislature at that time, and after that elected to the Superior Court out there. And um, Richard Bell, who is now on the Supreme Court, uh, was there one term. Some of these are terms, for example, Jess Walton was defeated after the first term, and Hope Smith came in. Mm -hmm. But at that time, we had the plan of improvement. Roy LaCroix was defeated because Roy, Roy didn't, <laughs> well, I don't know. How do I not say Roy was very fond of Roy in a way, but uh, uh, he, he, was, he didn't feel as strong as I felt. Okay. But anyhow, we, we got it done. And, uh, and then I, Cy Gordy, J. for Cy Gordy, who is still living, but bless his heart, he's, he's out in left field now. He's mm -hmm. about 93, 4. Is he the one that has he the time? He was at the Chamber of Commerce at the time. He was the head of the Central Atlanta Improvement Association. Oh, okay. And a wonderful staff person that was just a great help to me. Mm -hmm. Wonderful man. And the Chamber of Commerce gave him to me to, to help. Mm -hmm. We didn't. When I was in legislature, I even had used my own sector, my sector. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> you know. it, it was a sacrifice. It, it was, it, uh, it, uh, I, people don't realize what a sacrifice yeah, the people right. make yeah, to serve is. in that. Right. But now, uh, according to what I've read, uh, there was a great deal went into promoting the passage of oh, this. Oh, yeah, that's that, what I was about to get to. So I go and held up the Chamber of Commerce publication and get out the vote. He's the one that named it the plan of improvement. Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. As a compromise on my program, mm -hmm. and we did 97 percent of it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's government. It's well, compromise. yes, government See is what compromise. I mean? Yes. But mm -hmm. I introduced it. I told them I was going to do it. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I defeated them based on that, on my word, and I stuck to my word. What input did you have on selecting that commission that, that we, we the We had to agree the local delegation in Atlanta and Fulton County had to pass on it. The reason Fulton, Deca I, mean, had, I mean, Fulton County and DeKalb County had mm -hmm. to pass on it. The reason DeKalb County had to pass on it, their delegation, and they had three members, we had three members. <coughs> a part of Atlanta lies in the cab, and therefore they could veto any legislation. Mm -hmm. We couldn't veto, we could veto theirs, they could veto ours, you see. Mm -hmm. So it was a matter of trade and, and getting them to agree, but, mm -hmm. but they insisted on them. And Richard Bell, if you talk to him about it now, he'd tell you he did it all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but we had to cram it down their throat, mm -hmm. and, and had to cram it down the hospital's throat. Mm -hmm. And then after it passed, 
Hartsfield was sort of tickled me. Hartsfield had a street sweep out there on my street. I lived on New Lady Road, right there parallel with Peachtree Road, between Cantrell and Roxborough. And he had a street sweep out there sweeping my street. It was one block long. It's January the 1st. <laughs> oh, on New Year's Day. <laughs> That's right. Oh, was he but, sending you a message? And then, oh, you know, yeah, he was, he was saying, you know, you're in Atlanta now. We're going to keep the streets clean. Mm -hmm. That's what he was saying. And he, after, after it was done, I, I just laid low and let him take all the credit he wanted. Mm -hmm. But history, the historian hadn't been right. I'm telling you the straight story. Well, that's what we want is a straight the story. Straight that's what this project story. is all about. All right, I'm telling you the straight story. Uh, well, our our uh, fellow that writes the history of Atlanta, Mr. Garrett. Know, Garrett. He's wrong. He gives all the credit to Hartsfield. I don't care about credit. I want to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> well, anyway. now, the follow-up, the third volume in that series, Atlanta and Barnes, was written by, um, oh, wait just a minute, um, Harold Martin. Harold Martin. And he gives you credit. Did, did he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I was at a meeting recently, and, uh, well, before the campaign with Barrett, uh, it was in a gathering. In fact, it was a judge's meeting out in, in uh, you know, he ran for the Senate. Uh, what's Barry's first name? Frank? Not Frank. Oh, um, Barry. He um, was head of the state. Uh, yes, yes. Um, and, uh, was the consummate politician, I suppose. Oh, is yes, far absolutely. As the, no doubt and, about it. And he I, was... I, I, give, I give him credit for the airport. I used to play yeah. baseball out there when <laughs> I lived out there, you know. Right. But, but he did want, he loved the city so, he wanted to he see, did. he didn't want any threat, thing, right. any threat uh, right. to it, and he wanted to keep getting elected as well, of That's course. Right, sure. And I would like to ask you this question. What role do you think or, or did racism play any role in, any. in this? You don't Not any. This was before all of that. Well, play any. The, the percentages that uh, I well, read. Well, I vote, that, for example, uh, in, uh, when I was elected to the House, uh, Hamilton Douglas. Hamilton Douglas ran against me when I ran for the Spear Corps. And uh, uh, but in my first race for the legislature, Grace Hamilton helped me. She was head of the, uh, what's the other, not NAACP, what's the other, what's the other one? Urban, Urban, Urban League. League. Yeah. She, and she, in fact, Hamilton Douglas, she had known about my work and everything. And Hamilton Douglas was on one of the boards at the Black College, it was on one of the boards over there. And, um, and Helen Douglas Mankin was his aunt, mm -hmm. and she had strong support in the black community. Mm -hmm. And that was the hard part about my race mm -hmm. and the Hamilton was running, and I told him, I said, Ham, you ought to run against Jake Pye. He's going, if you want, I'm going to lift it. He just, <laughs> I'm going to lift it. And well, it takes Ham, to have confidence. Ham, well, the only difficulty, see, Ham made up his mind a little bit late. I worked on it. When Judge Hendricks was ill, I didn't think he was going to run. Then I said, if Judge Hendricks doesn't run, I'm going to run. And I laid the foundation. Everywhere Ham went, I'd already been there. So, it was, anyway, Ham's a wonderful fellow. Well, to back up just a minute, when you ran for the legislature in 1948, who mm -hmm. did you run against? I ran, oh, his name was, uh, mm -hmm. And at some point I saw Marshall, that... Marshall, Frank Morrison, Morrison, Frank, Frank Morrison. Morrison. I saw that He was the other member. That, see, that's a Freudian slip to forget him because he was my opposition. Yeah. Um, that there was a special session. I read that there was a special session yeah. in 1948 that's and right. that you served in it as I well. I served in it, yeah. What was the special session for? The special session mm -hmm. was to um, elect Herman Talmadge, the Supreme Court, had agreed that he should be governor instead of anybody else. And when I ran to the legislature, I succeeded Paul Etheridge, Jr. 
who was a good friend of mine. He and I were in Fulton High School together and was two twin brothers. One of them was on the court right here, Bill. Bill Edwards is his brother. And his father, that's one reason my, I really passed the bar ahead of the time that the Bar Association showed me as having been admitted because I passed the bar eight months before I was admitted. But uh, I didn't hear about it until later, uh, just before December. And Judge Paul Etheridge, Paul's father, was on this court at the time. He said, Luther, I want to, I want to sign your application and admit you to the bar when you pass. And I waited till he got back from the Christmas holidays into the next year so he could do it. But anyhow, but anyhow, Paul, I succeeded. Paul ran for the civil court. He, he resigned his seat in the legislature, and I ran for, for Paul's vacancy, and I was elected for the special term and also for the new term. And then the next year, God, some color in I haven't even forgotten his name. I don't remember them. <laughs> I'll put them on the back seat. <laughs> well, pretty soon you didn't have any opposition. You, no, no, you, so, no. But anyway, um, back to the statistics. Um, I read somewhere that even in 1950, Atlanta was already 41% black. Yes, it was. And that's what I started to tell you, is that Ham had this strong black vote. In fact, he got 55%, and I got 45%. Mm -hmm of the black vote. And the main reason I got the black vote, I took a strong position on inner position. That was before, you know, that's when everybody was, uh, the school decision came out. Okay, came well, out can you? While I was in the legislature. Oh, yes. Now, can you explain then interposition? Well. I think I know what it is, but. Yes, it's, it's a governmental function and it was very, it was very pro-integration. Okay. On that one speech, I, I really got a lot of it black folks on it. Right. So we got the intellectual blacks to help. Yeah. And it was important, black folks was important. Yeah. Then. But you don't think that it was a factor as far as Hartsfield's feelings were concerned or his, his motivation. No, no, no. Thing is, thing about Hossfield, he he'd go to Buckhead Fifty Club and he'd say one thing. <laughs> In other words, he'd, they'd say something about the blacks not paying any taxes. Say, what do you think we've got that city court down on the Cater Street for? We get three million dollars a year out of that court. <laughs> I mean he was a good boy. He was a masterful politician, I'll tell you that. He really was. Well, then how about the strength of the black community and the black vote at that time? Because when the county, I mean, when this plan went into effect, the plan of improvement, then their vote was diluted considerably. Yeah. Well, they did. I mean, they, they, there was no fight against it. They didn't yeah. fight it. They didn't do anything mm -hmm. against it at all. Okay. We increased the... Uh, uh, 80 percent. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other statistics are just yeah. incredible. They, yeah. it, they, they physically, geographically trebled in size. Later on, they turned, you see, but they after they didn't they didn't really exercise any opposition until they exceeded 50 percent. Oh. They were important in every election. Yeah. Important. Mm -hmm in every election, but it wasn't, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that way? Um, well, one of the things that was happening here was that Atlanta had been a municipality, and then once the plan of improvement was passed and, and, and started to be implemented, it was a metropolitan area. That's right. And that was going to make some difference about many things. Uh, one was that the federal government was getting into the Cities Act at that point. They yes. had passed some legislation that was going to fund um, urban renewal, yes. for one thing. Yes, sure. Did you have any role in that, or did you have any knowledge? Had the Reeds said anything about 
I knew that Chuck Palmer, Techwood was one of, I think, the first public housing project in the United States. Chuck Palmer was a good friend of mine. In fact, I rented space for him in the, in the Palmer building in one of my shops for a number, long number of years. And Chuck was a wonderful fellow. Wonderful fellow. Mm -hmm. So you were basically aware uh, that, that, much, that the government, much. that the federal government was going yeah. to be taking a strong hand. Yeah, and in, I worked okay. hard. I worked mm -hmm. hard in the black community to get the vote that I got. I speak mm -hmm. in the black church every Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, this this sounds like that your career in the legislature was a one issue thing, yeah. but it was that's not true. You were interested in something else, weren't yeah. you there? Well, I'll tell you, I really wanted to go to Congress. Is that right? I wanted to go to Congress, but the difficulty at that time, we had county unit, we had the uh, county unit system in Georgia, and somebody from Atlanta wouldn't have a chance. And uh, Charles Welton, as you know, uh, got elected, but the Supreme Court decision came out to where in a special election and abolished the county unit system, and therefore uh, he was elected. Mm -hmm. And when Charles, Charles when Max was elected governor, Charles resigned after the primary. And the Democratic Committee came to me at the time and offered me a Democratic nomination. But I'd just been elected for a new eight-year term. I said, oh, these two-year terms, I don't want to be bothered with. But I really did want to go. But I was already set on the bench at that time. And they tended it to me the first thing. I turned it down. Well, that was gratifying, though, wasn't it? Yes, it was very yes. gratifying. I really did appreciate it. But the thing I was thinking about that I was so impressed with in your resume was uh, your trip to Milledgeville Hospital. Yes. Listen, the reason I got interested was right after the legislature, right after I was elected to the legislature, the Dream Chamber of Commerce put on a caravan to the state hospital. And I said, if I'm going to represent the people, I need to know what's going on down there. I've never been to Millersville. Never. And I went. And it curled my hair. Absolutely curled my hair. And I went down, I saw that mess. And uh, Jack Nelson, Jack was a good friend of mine. I reported it all out to Jack. Jack, <laughs> Uh, no. Now he got an award. Oh him, yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And Jack, he, Jack stayed. Plus he got he a job. He was my house practically every night. You know, really. <laughs> but Jack's a good friend of mine. He'll tell you Plus that. Plus he got a job with the Los Angeles. Uh, uh, yes, Times. he said. Still, I see him on Washington Week mm -hmm. quite often now. Mm -hmm. But he came down and spoke to Historical Society recently, and he paid me a nice compliment for that ordinance. Mm -hmm. And. The, what I started to tell you about, uh, oh God, Mental. Barry, Barry, uh, George. oh George Barry, he said I was the unsung hero oh. in the history of Atlanta, mm -hmm. that's why he said he, he, Well, that's a But that's anyhow, a um, compliment. About, uh, about the other situation, um, what were we talking about before then? I, uh, well, I was. I really wanted you to talk about your role in creating the mental health commission. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. We're talking about mental health. All right, all right. So when I went to legislature, I introduced voluntary admission bill and introduced legislation, got it passed, and uh, realizing the situation it was in, that uh, I got to. Young men in the Jim Chamber of Commerce in Atlanta that were friends of mine, we got together and I took the executive committee of the Postman's Union down to the club with Manhattans and Martinez and nice dinner and they agreed to rewalk the routes for mental health for us to raise some money and set up an office. We raised a hundred thousand dollars in one day. One day. In fact, they came down here from, from the National Association for Mental Health and wanted to loan us some money. We're not here to borrow money, we're here to raise money. And they always, I think, because I later served as president of the National Association, but they, that curled their hair when I refused their money. Yeah. 
but we raised it. And I, we had George Hamilton, who was treasurer of the state, that counted all that money in his office. I never got through counting money in all my life, quarters and dimes and so forth. But anyhow, we set up the first mental health organization in the state of Georgia, the city of Atlanta, hired an executive and set it up. In the beginning, we could have met in a telephone booth. Now that's how much the mental health movement has grown since that time. And after that, I was, elect I was elected president of the Atlanta Association, the Georgia Association, vice president of the National Association, and president and chairman of the board of the National Association in 1957 and 1959, mm -hmm. for two years. So your interest in mental health continued for a long Absolutely. time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Continued a long time, a very wonderful experience, too. And was there ever Mark, any other opportunity for any other legislation? Or oh, any, yes. We worked uh, in legislation all the time, the mm -hmm. National Association, mm -hmm. community mental health centers. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, laws, you know what happened when I first went in mental health? That people, if somebody, remember the time they had Alzheimer's or something like that, or Parkinson's, they would do a thing where they'd go down and swear out a warrant against them. And could, and could get them admitted. Pick them up and put them down there and stay there the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's happening. Yeah. Now they got mental health rights. You've got to review it every year. Mm -hmm. you know, well, we, I can't begin to tell you all the things we did in mental health. Mm -hmm. And well, it all started right there. Started there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, while you were in the legislature, uh, there were some other things that were going on. The creation of the uh, Jekyll Island Authority. Was that anything yeah, I that... I went down and looked it over. Went down with the committee at Jekyll Island, and at the time uh, we were thinking about buying it, and he talked some lawyer. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a 315, my dear. Okay. <laughs> you know, you ain't sure talk about yourself, and I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. We're good.